Hey, what's up guys? It's Liam or Weagle on your Overwatch back with a new video. Today, we're going to be talking about Anna, the most criminally underrated support with all the utility in the world if you have the skill to leverage it. One misconception I hear so often is that you should not watch streamers or anyone to learn how to get better at the game. Well, I watched Jay Hong, who is the best Anna in the world by quite some distance, and it showed me so much more that Anna can do more than I ever thought I would ever want to try in a competitive game and it is all about getting in the right amount of abilities and actions per minute. If you can get all of the value out of Anna, she is the best healer in the game. But trying to actually master it, of course, is where the difficulty comes in. I've got loads of gameplay examples, as always, for you guys. The first thing I want to explain, though, is the Jay Hong Anna shot or quick scope that he does all of the time. And then we'll go into the abilities per minute. So what is this infamous quick scope? Well, if you're used to like playing Call of Duty, then maybe you're going to be good at this strategy. But what you can do with Anna is actually quick scope, which is zoom in and shoot as soon as you've zoomed in to actually hit the target pretty much instantly. This is better than no scoping because one, it's more accurate when you get used to it, but also your weapon becomes a hit scan when you are zoomed in. Whereas when you are firing from the hip, it takes time for the dart to travel to someone in order to heal them. So what you want to be doing is doing this quick scope as often as possible. If someone's really close to you, or it's more convenient to no scope of course that's something you're going to want to do but if you've got Genji's flying around off in the distance or your Winston's just dove in or there's a target you need to shoot quickly which I'll show you in a minute then it is very good to be able to try and learn this quick scope it's not super easy if you're not used to it but it really is as simple as zooming in quick and shooting you can then of course stay zoomed in if you're a big distance from your team to keep shooting out from there this is really good for healing and for dealing out damage so this game on Anubis is going to show you this quick scope firsthand. It's also going to be a really good example of the actions per minute you can perform as Anna. The first thing that happens here that's significant is the tracer tries to get in my face and I hit the sleep dart. That's the first action. This is what I'm talking about. That is massive value if you can hit a sleep dart like that as Anna. But the main examples I want to show are about the good positioning and the ways you can use the quick scope to be at your advantage. If you notice that just there, I pulled out a couple of really cheeky quick scopes to heal my teammates that were at a distance that would have been very difficult to hit with a no scope. Once that happens, we move on to the point. And because my team are fully healed, and this is where some Annas, I think, get a bit flustered, is they'll stand there just shooting someone on their team that are already at full health. Well, as you'll see in this gameplay, what I decide to do is actually start dishing out some damage. In this fight, I managed to heal everyone. I managed to finish off the Mercy. I managed to shoot the Soldier, which gets followed up on by the Genji. And I even managed to take the Diva out of her mech. This is at the same time as anti nading when I have to and also keeping my team alive. This is what I'm talking about actions per minute with Anna. So often you'll see someone pick her, stand at the back and shoot things from a distance that are on their team. Whereas really, she's almost like Doomfist in a way where you want to combo her abilities. Hitting a sleep dart to juggle someone is also a very good example of how this can work. You can actually sleep someone and nade them, or you can shoot someone, then nade them, then shoot, because the nade will cancel the animation for the initial shot. So there's all of these crazy combinations and things you can do with Anna that let you truly access her kit and her value in a really big way. And in matchmaking, people will say to you, can we have a Mercy instead of an Anna? And that may be better if the person playing Mercy isn't as good mechanically. But if you are a star DPS player and you want to learn a support, all of these actions you can do on Anna can carry the game in a very big way. Just as an example, in this gameplay on Anubis, now where I'm playing on defense, I managed to sleep this tracer three times and I managed to get a really nice quick scope shot on her just like I was talking about earlier. That value is undeniable. Mercy cannot do anything near close to that. In order for Zen to do that as well, he would have to hit some incredible shots to have that same amount of value. But in terms of in the mid fight, Anna is by far the strongest hero if you can pull that out. Sleep Dart, I think, is still really underrated as what it can do because not only is it necessarily something your team can also follow up on for big value, but sometimes it can just take someone out of the fight. In this same Anubis game, I do sleep the Tracer, but I then go off to find my teammates and heal them. Often you'll see an Anna making the mistake of trying to follow up on that damage with the Tracer, whereas what I do is, while she's asleep, 
we just go and get kills somewhere else. Of course, making these snap decisions in the moment is where another part of the skill comes in. But if I manage to sleep this traitor in every single fight, well, it's not a surprise that we managed to roll out the whole game from there. And if you could hit this many sleeps in a game on a certain target, it doesn't always have to be the same one. Just removing that value out for five seconds, a huge play is equivalent to getting a kill as long as the team fight, of course, goes like a normal team fight and people are getting fragged out while that person is sleeping on the floor. Just as a cheeky clip, I want to show you this retake that we had where we're trying to stall out the point on Li Zhang. I walk in, I hit an anti-nade, I hit two no-scopes, and then I sleep the Torbjorn. I end up dying, but we managed to trickle in and win from there because of that pure value just from how strong Anna's kit is. On this Rue 66 game, I go on a mad flank because I know we're going to grab and I'm not sure we're going to follow up on it, so I anti-nade their entire team. These plays are everywhere, and that's the whole point of this video. Constant actions per minute. This Dorado example is really good as well because as you'll see, my Winston's really weak and he dives to me and I actually do nade him, which I rarely do to heal. I try to always use it as an offensive tool, but we keep him alive because we need to. We're trying to roll out the fight here. I nano the soldier and then not only do I nano him, I manage to sleep the diva as well. These actions are so much more important than healing my team right now. Not only does that happen, we managed to do some damage with the soldier up, we managed to finish off the Winston, and it doesn't even end there. The Diva tries to run away, and as I mentioned earlier, here is a very important cancel that can just net you a bit of extra damage that can really help you in an important fight. I managed to sleep the Diva, and then I actually shoot her, nade her, then shoot her. That way you do maximum damage, you also can't heal of course when that's happened, and that nade cancels the animation for that initial shot. Speaking of fragging Anna, and don't get me wrong, you do have to be very careful with the balance. You want to make sure that these actions you're applying to be aggressive are only applied when your team don't need healing. And this is what I mean. There should always be something happening when you're playing Anna. If you're not healing, you should be doing damage. But as soon as you need to go back to healing, you have to have the game sense in order to go back and do that straight away. I had this other crazy Li Zhang game where we had four DPS mains. In fact, we had five because I'm one of them. But four of them were never going to swap and we had a Lucio pick, bless his heart. We don't need Anna. But what happened next was I picked Anna and they're like, could you pick a tank or a Zen or something? And I'm like, don't worry, guys, I've got this. The reason I've got this is because I realized the amount of actions you can do as Anna. And because my shot was feeling particularly crispy, I can then go into this game and just be an offensive Anna. I could hit an anti nade so that all of the 16 DPS players on my team could follow up on that damage. I could use the quick scoping skill I'd learned in order to heal my Genji on the other side of the map, but also follow up on the damage on a Genji running away. When a Winston dies me, I know that I can shoot him, anti nade him, then juggle him with a sleep dart, which is another really important part of comboing, and then do more damage to finish him off after. If a Winston's dove into your entire team and he's taking damage actually the best time to sleep dart him is when he's about to dive away because you can then juggle that ability even further all of this stuff i'm talking about of course depends on how good you are with anna i'm not good at zen so that's why i didn't pick zen it depends if your shot is on i don't want to use this as a one-off example but just how i did apply these strategies in order to win out a game that looked like a pretty sticky situation on a hero that isn't necessarily the right pick but because of the way i managed managed to utilize her by ways I had learnt from watching one of the best in the world and because of how Overwatch is and how it's very deathmatchy in rank sometimes, it's opened up a lot of ways I can now use Anna that would normally seem unorthodox. You just have to make sure you're good enough to be able to output that damage, healing and crowd control at the right times. And here's the part where I have to stop myself from repeating myself and it comes back to the original point of this video that Anna has all of this kit, all of this utility, and every second of every game, the way that Anna's designed, the way that she comes out, is that she should always be doing something. Should never be not shooting or throwing an anti nade. Whether you're healing, whether you're quit scoping, whether you hit a fat nano just at the right time so that your Reinhardt can hammer everyone down and swing them in the face or your soldier can wipe everyone out. When you do that, when you nano them, Heal them as well. Hit sleep dart on something that's trying to CC 
your teammates ultimate that they're doing. Your job as Anna never ends. She's up there with like tracer levels of always doing something. It is in a different way and it's not in her ability to move. It's in her ability to throw out massive burst healing in the right places and also deny value from the enemy team and no other support has anywhere near this kind of utility. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did this open up Anna in a new light to you? Had you ever played her like this or you're already a Jay Hong pro? I'm nowhere near perfect with her and I plan on learning her even more and more. But the amount of stuff you can do, guys, it's just nearly unparalleled with any other hero in the game. Be sure to check out our Twitter and our Discord where you guys can find the anime of your dreams. Be sure to hit that bell icon so you guys get notified when our videos go live. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and have a great day as always. Take care and peace, people.